Good morning, my name is Chris Fox, and today we're talking about money, author style. Um, if you are a writer and you are looking to become an author, an entrepreneur, ideally, uh, this is, is going to answer a few hopefully low-level questions for you. So when I first got into this game back in 2014, I was a wage earner. I'd never run a business before in my life. I didn't understand how that's different. I was used to every couple of weeks or once a month or whatever the schedule for my, my employer was, I received money. <laughs> they just give me money. And there's the theoretical money that they tell me I make per year, my salary, and then there's the actual money that shows up in my paycheck. And I don't really think too much about what my salary is because that's something I never get to touch. I only get to see the money after the fact. Well, when you become an entrepreneur, that changes because now you're running a business. And when you're running a business, there's a huge difference between capital and income. So as an example, last year, my company grossed a little over $350,000, which sounds like a lot. It really does. It sounds like a lot. But of that, my actual income when all was said and done was about $160,000. And the rest of it, $190,000 was expenses. So I had advertising was a huge chunk of that and covers and editing and various marketing ploys I tried and creating new um, product lines and audio proofing and all sorts of little things kind of roll into running a business. And what's different, I think, and I didn't understand when you're coming at this from, from a wage earner mindset is capital spends a lot differently than profit, than money, than income that goes into your pocket. So the money that you're used to getting paid on a regular basis, um, you've already bled away 30 or 40 percent of that to the IRS, to the government. And, and so your goal is to spend as much money as creatively as you can so that you're paying as little in taxes to the government as possible. So your, your, your company, the capital, should bear as many expenses as you can. There's a couple of small examples. You Looking around me, um, I'm in a freestanding structure. This is an office I use just for the business. And so I write off the, the portion of rent that we use to pay for this. So about 10% of my overall rent is paid by the business. Um, that's a great example of how capital is paying for my kind of my lifestyle. Um, medical insurance. My family pays something like $12,000 a year in medical insurance for myself, Lisa, and Caleb. We have pretty good care through, through Kaiser. love Kaiser. Um, and, and that's another thing that the business will take care of. And the important distinction here is if the business pays $1,000 to take care of my insurance, if you had had to pay that or I had had to pay that out of my pocket, it would have cost this, about $1,400 because any money that's made it into your pocket has already been taxed by the government. You've had to pay for that. So if you have to pay for something with that money that's left over, then you already, you know, things have gone wrong. You want to spend as many things from capital, from the business that you're, your, excuse me, from the money that your business has earned as possible. And I'm not suggesting, you know, that you, you break the law or anything, but the IRS is very, very kosher, you know, and okay with us doing many, many things like creating assets. You know, if you are saying, okay, I've written the text of this book and I'm going to pay an editor, I'm going to pay a cover designer, I'm going to pay, um, you know, a typographer and I'm going to pay, uh, you know, a, an artist and I'm going to pay, you know, a book promoter and a, a personal assistant. And if you're putting the money towards things that are creating commerce and, and, and things that the IRS approves of, you can spend the money in a way that creates you assets. And, and this is long term what, what my goal is anyway. If you want to get rich, if you want to retire, if you want to um, get to a point where you don't have to think about money anymore. You want to make assets, as many assets as possible. And for some people, that's stocks. Some people like to play the real estate market. In our case, we're authors. We can write stories, give them amazing covers, create series, series pages, and put these books out there. And those books become our assets. I remember reading an interview from Anne Rice in, I want to say, the late 90s. This is way before I had ever become a professional author. Um, but in the interview, she had said vampires had come and gone repeatedly and would keep coming and going. And she's been right, where fads come over and over and over. So if we build these assets, these books, um, and using this capital for the rest of our lives, every time there's a resurgence in our backlist, we're going to be earning more money from them. And that's kind of my goal, is, is to create a whole bunch of little revenue streams. Every entrepreneur, I think, wants to do that. Some people do it through a mix of fiction and nonfiction and speaking. There's all sorts of ways to earn your income. You could stream. I mean, 
whatever you want to do. But however you're making that money, if you are an author, if you are someone who is earning income from your art, uh, you do have to start thinking about money a little bit differently. You want to become savvy to what expenses can be written off and what can't. So, you know, talking to an accountant. Uh, starts to become a very good deal uh, at some point, even though it is going to cost you money when you file your taxes. Having a professional look over your shoulder when you're you're doing taxes and be able to tell you, okay, this is why I think you should now incorporate versus you know stay an individual. Um, that's really helpful to get from professionals, and and, and it's kind of a, a, a an adulting step, I guess, for your business. You get to a point where okay, I've been selling books for a little while, and I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm going to sit down with a tax attorney and. and and see what they say or a CPA and see what they say um, it, it can be tremendously useful and it can help you grow but the more you do this the more your company earns the more money comes in for you as an author the more you differentiate between capital and income so for me income is every three months I have to make payroll and then once I pay payroll it pays money into my personal account um, that's the income at the end of the year if, if I've got money left over that extra profit also becomes income which is great I'll take, I'll take more profit um, but the vast majority of, of, of money that my company earns actually goes to the company itself. You know, I, I, uh, my editor these days is Lisa. Lisa earns, you know, quite a bit of money each year now editing these novels um, because we're putting through, through so many books and, and she gets paid every dime of that editing. Um, there's lots of ways that our company can help us as, uh, I, I don't know, entrepreneurs and people. Like, you can help your family and have them do various tasks. I mean, it, it really does help you to start thinking about this business as a source of income and not, you know, I'm just writing a book and getting a paycheck every month. Uh, I have no idea if this is helpful. It's extremely rambly as many of my recent videos have been, but it's a result of infrequent sleep. Uh, but hopefully it is useful. Please let me know in the comments. If you have questions about capital and sort of, you know, going from um, I'm writing a book to this is an author business. Feel free to ask those in the comments. I'm not sure how I would approach a video, but maybe we could frame it together if you guys are asking in the, in the comments. Um, I could pick up from there what you'd like to know. And I think this is gonna be mostly useful for new authors. Uh, I think that we have a lot of seasoned authors who watch this channel too. So it's not just me that you're gonna be getting good answers from in, in the comments if you have questions. Um, you know, I've seen Joe Solari lurking here from time to time and people of his caliber are rare um, and you can really get some good information. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get back to the writing. I just put out another book, Dryker's Folly Went Live, Dryker's Stand. I'm knee-deep in and need to have uh, submitted for pre-order in a couple weeks here. So I have three more books to write this year. Is that right? Yes, three more books to write this year. Um, but it looks like I'll be able to do that as long as I keep going at my current pace, and that will make it my most profitable, most, not profitable, I'm sorry, most productive year ever. Uh, last year was the most profitable. Um... Wow, this is so rambling. All right, guys, I'm going to get back to the writing. I'll see you next week.